Lessons of the Storm, a novel, The Chant of Vitasta, a collection of poems, and a 101 Thoughts to Light Up Your Path, a collection of mystical aphorisms. He also launched a YouTube channel, The Mystic Mariner. He has traveled to Sweden, the Netherlands, German, Austria, Czech Republic, Hungary, Korea, Singapore, Malaysia, and Thailand. He has a personal website, www.ravikedhar.in. Now we welcome you, sir, and would like to request to say a few lines for motivating all the attendees before the start of the event. Good morning. Am I audible? Uh, yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, okay. You can adjust your camera a little bit, sir. Yeah, better. Yes, sir. Now we can see you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, it's good to see that our institution is organizing a webinar on empowering women through education. As we all are aware, that education itself is an empowering tool. Without education, particularly in the modern age, no individual can assert his identity, nor can he or she contribute to his or her family welfare and also to the national development. If we look at uh, the uh, the composition of population, not just in this country, but also world over, we'll see that this world is almost evenly distributed across the two genders, men and women. There has been a kind of uh, a narrative in the past whereby one gender has been privileged over the other one. And that has happened precisely because all these narratives have emanated from the West, wherein man was considered to be the breadwinner and woman was considered to be the person who would be the housewife or the homemaker in modern times. The nomenclature has been changed a little. But then the narrative has continued to be the same and it took a long time for women to assert their rights, particularly in, even in a country like UK where the right to vote was given to women in somewhere in the middle, uh, towards the middle of the 20th century. Whereas in India, with a very liberal kind of a constitution that was framed in this country, women were granted the right to vote and were granted all the civic and political rights that were granted to men right from the inception of the Republic of India, once it was liberated from the foreign yoke. Now, the awareness of rights, the ability to participate in community life, all these hinge on one thing, and that is education. If women are not well educated, they cannot contribute, they cannot assert their identity, nor can they participate in the life of the community in both in terms of the economic activities and also the social, civic, and family life and everything in all aspects of human life, they will be left behind. And that's why it's important that education, right education, needs to be given to women. There have been always, because of these narratives which came from the West, because along with the invasions that India was subjected to because of its own reasons, because of many reasons, partly because we ourselves had lost the ability to stem the tide of invasions, we had become disunited, we had lost the sense of national consciousness. And because the national consciousness was missing, so we played into the hands of the invaders. And these invaders brought their philosophy, their ideology along with them, and they transformed the Indian society. And as a result, in India also, women came to be subjugated, they came to be shifted from public life to the 
life within the four walls of their houses. Otherwise, if you'll go back to the Indian texts, like if you even go back to Ramayan, the Balkand of Ramayan clearly mentions that in Ayodhya, all women were educated, not just men, all women were educated and all women had, there were theater groups, there were dance groups, there were cultural troops, cultural groups, which were comprised of all women, which means that women had a high status in Indian society in the past. And if at all they lost that status, it was because of these distortions that entered Indian society from the West. But having said that, it, now we have to reverse the clock. We have to change the situation. And this situation can be changed only if women are educated. And if you look at the graph, the gross enrollment ratio at the primary level, at the secondary level, and then at the higher education level in India, you find that women trail behind women, and particularly women in rural areas not in the cities, in the urban areas, there's a lot of awareness, there's a lot of consciousness, there's a lot of awakening as a result of which women you find in all the educational institutions participating in the educational institution. But when you go back, you go to the villages and here we need to remember that India is 66%, around 66% uh, of the Indian population resides in the villages and depends on their livelihood in the villages. And when we go to these villages, we find the situation very sad and women are still, it's a male dominated society in the villages and women are not given the kind of benefits and privileges that are granted to men. And as a result, women are, kept secluded and women are also deprived of the benefits of modern education and the benefit of making the personal liberty of making choices. This can change only if educational institutions are encouraged in the rural areas and also we encourage women in rural areas to come into the higher educational system and the school system because higher educational system again depends on its in, intake on the school system. So if in schools you don't have a good enrollment ratio of women, you'll, the enrollment ratio in the higher education system will, will also suffer. So there's a need for encouraging women in rural areas. And herein, I believe that NGOs have a lot of uh, role to play because government institutions tend to be more of uh, working by compliance. That's the problem with government and all governmental efforts, they proceed from the top to the bottom. The command comes from the top to the bottom and the observance of the com compliances, the compliances are many times very cavalier. There's uh, people who are supposed to be implementing the policies and the programs, their hearts are not into it. In comparison, if you go to the civic civil society organizations, the NGOs, they are committed people. And because they are committed, so their contribution to the change, the transformation of the scene scenario would be, I believe would be more valuable. So with these words, I would like to thank you all. And I again, once again, appreciate that uh, the internal com uh, committee of the institution sort of organizing this webinar on women's empowerment through education. So wish you all a great day and a great sharing of thoughts. We have a very distinguished panel of experts to speak on the issue. And I believe that our boys and girls, our students have much to learn from their wisdom. Thank you.
thank you so it was indeed a stimulating address which has surely raised the enthusiasm of all our attendees on behalf of jims vasant kunj may i now welcome our guest ms yogita bhayana ms yogita bhayana is a well known anti rape activist a prominent public figure widely acknowledged as a face of nirbhaya movement from 2012 to 20 She initiated and spearheaded the protest and campaign to change the juvenile justice law age limit for rapists from 18 to 16 years following the Nirbhaya rape and murder. The Rajya Sabha passed the bill in 2016. Besides the Nirbhaya movement, she is continuously at the forefront of other high profile cases. Most recently the August 1, 2021 Delhi Kent rape case of 9 year old Dalit girl, the September 14, 2020 Hathras gang rape case. Ms Yogita is an ex member of National Commission for Women's Expert Committee on Gender and Education and is a recipient of the prestigious 2012 NCW award for her contribution to society. Ms Yogita has also served as a vice chairperson of the Uttarakhand Government State Council for Women Empowerment. Ms Yogita is also a widely recognized posh expert having served and currently serving on six inter internal complaint committees constituted to handle complaints on sexual harassment at workplaces most notably with the delhi high court and delhi state legal service authority lastly she is also a renowned tv personality and public speaker routinely appearing in tv interviews panel discussions debates dedicated shows on my work etc she is a regular face on tv news channels having the reputation of a fiery social activist may i now request you ma'am to enlighten our audience with your knowledgeable talk thank you so much first of all for uh, having me uh, in your esteemed uh, panel uh, i am actually traveling so i had already uh, conveyed that and i i'm sorry if there is a technical glitch or a network issue um first of all uh, i i'm feeling very overwhelmed to hear ravi sir and uh, you guys also i mean uh, uh, you have really put up a good show and it was very important to discuss uh, this uh, um, kind of uh, women empowerment or you can say that discussion leads to conclusions and unless you discuss and you we will never be able to get the solutions so we know the problems i will not get into that uh, what are the challenges um, because mostly covered by ms ravi um, and we all know that so i would rather focus on the solutions which, which are available and what how we are uh, as a society going to impact and how we collectively as mentioned earlier also as as uh, as citizens uh, do our bit to make a safer place for women for working also i mean livable place right now uh, i don't think so we can call our country livable for women very honestly and it's a very big acknowledgement but it has come from experience because i'm not only talking about um, other things you know which we really look at as women empowerment very basic safety safety is the first thing if you are not safe as a woman in the country i mean really we have a long way to go so uh, if i would like to focus on i would like to focus on the preventions and how as society we can bring about a change and the first change i think has already begun in the sense of like we are discussing it right now is also uh, one step for the for that and uh, i was listening to uh, mr ravi i think when he mentioned about the civil society's role uh, it's very important and uh, ngos are having important role to play but i also feel uh, the role of civil society fits in when government fails i mean it's it's definitely they go hand in hand but definitely there are a lot of loopholes which need to cover and we are trying as individual as activists as groups i have been joined by a lot of young volunteers also with me so i think change can come only when we put efforts collectively so your college can also i mean you you guys are youngsters you you should definitely take part so now let's start with like i have dealt with many rape survivors i have been working on this for last 10 years and uh, um, i really feel we have got this conclusion 10 years ago when nirbhaya thing happened even prior to that i was working in this uh, particular field i knew how you know everybody felt for this everybody around the world felt for that case and lot of discussions deliberations movement happened every 
but he thought things will change that time we had that time i was uh, part of ncws that gender gender committee i was not a member member because introduction was a bit uh, wrong there i was part of the uh, committee which was to give the solution in terms of curriculum to the to the cbsc or to the to the uh, hrd ministry so that was a uh, kind of a committee i was part in so then we really deliberated with lot of experts across world definitely for sure we uh, invited uh, extreme panel from india uh, with lot of knowledge and wisdom we discussed deliberated and we came out with only one solution which was long term which was very effective definitely we have lot of other uh, solutions which definitely will uh, uh, address to this issue but one and only one solution which is the full proof solution is sensitizing the children and a bringing a new generation which is very sensitive to the i mean which includes the gender and treat the gender equally unfortunately i mean this is really really a far dream we started 10 years ago even till now we have not been able to include those uh, gender sensitive uh, uh, topics or uh, gender neutral i would say gender inclusion uh, where boy we still have i mean different education for boys and girls we have different uniforms for them different reason people will argue on that but our curriculum our curriculum per se differentiate between boy and girl how can we expect society to change how can we expect a grown up man to to not discriminate uh, between two genders when we we have a curriculum a very basic curriculum in in our, uh, in our schools which then girl is cooking inside or playing with with dolls inside you know very very basic so we really try to have try to kind of uh, uh, you know bring that out that okay the curriculum has to change it has to be gender neutral definitely gender inclusion co education these are the things people might say you know it might take longer than what we want but definitely these are the solutions and uh, i don't want to go there but it is a it is a fact in our schools in our Particularly pointing out one religious speaks about uh, you know we say you know do to na ha puta palo and mostly I mean talking. uh yogita ma'am your voice is breaking i think there is some network issue um yogita ma'am we are trying to reach you yogita ma'am uh sonali please yes. un unmute and then call her yes ma'am very, very uh, now yeah now so I i'll conclude yes i'm so sorry for uh, that network uh, i'll conclude uh, because i think uh, it's just a beginning with interaction with students and youngsters of uh, your esteemed uh, organization i would like to engage further with the youngsters and with with the whole esteemed panel which with lot of wisdom to take things forward and how uh, we can collectively work towards that it's not my solo mission i think it's everybody feels for this you know it's not that uh, i have just taken that flag on me it's it's 
everybody's responsibility as a society so i would like to continue uh, my association with your esteem organization sorry for the network but i would just like to put a full stop after, after speaking one line that that we need to focus on boys and men if we really want to bring the safety for women we are we've been addressing the wrong audience women will be empowered if men st uh, start behaving and gender sensitization definitely is the need of the hour and we have to do it at all levels in all working levels all inside the house outside the house in the office organization schools everywhere and i think this is how we can uh, see the results maybe not immediately but maybe in few years so let's associate and let's work towards this it was really nice to hear the previous panelist and thank you so much for having me um there again and i always love to interact with youngsters it's so much to learn i mean i because i get so busy with the work in the sense of running around here and there but at the same time these discussions are also important and uh, they really empower so thank you so much thank you so much yogita ma'am for enlightening our audience with your knowledgeable talk now i would like to request dr nidhi gupta head department of management of studies also a member of internal committee to enlighten our guests and the audience uh i hope i am audible to everyone yes ma yeah thank you good morning ladies and gentlemen so it's my pleasure to speak on the theme which is close to heart women entrepreneurship so you know the story line of movies has changed from prince charming saving cinderella to elsa saving her sister anna without the help of any prince in the movie frozen but has the scenario of change changed in real life women empowerment you know has become a concern all around the world not the case of india if we are going to any developed nation the scenario is same we we you know the the women uh, of usa japan they are you know still facing the glass ceiling and they are also deprived of so many opportunities which you know can be offered to them even according to malala fund there are over 130 million girls worldwide who are not in school without an education these girls will often marry and have children at a young age work in unpaid or low paying positions and rely on their husbands or families for economic support without an education their futures and their families futures are limited women will only be able to empower if they are not prohibited to access the opportunities and for this i think education is the key to women's empowerment educational opportunity is one of the basic right of every women and also help in women empowerment as we you know me and my fellow colleagues we are in the higher education sector and i can say that you know a higher education from college or graduate school provides women with the knowledge and experience necessary to participate in government business and even you know in the civil society in addition with more education women and girls have better access to health information which is you know nowadays very very important and vital and other beneficial services too even you know when women have access to education other factors can make it difficult for they, them to take full advantage of you know the opportunities available women and girls still carry the cultural burden of being the primary homemakers which dr dhar was also mentioning and you know caregivers this unpaid second shift means that they have less time and energy to dedicate to their studies when women are the sole providers for their families if this is the case and you know it's often the case with the survivors of domestic violence many of the times the combination of household financial professional and educational responsibilities is even more difficult you know them to <clears throat> manage as i said that education 
is the key to empowerment but women empowerment is not just about teaching women or involving women in the decision making process women empowerment is you know about gender equality accepting their thoughts and viewpoints appreciating their efforts and decisions be it the tiny ones you know letting them make their own life decisions without forcing them so women empowerment you know cannot be achieved in a day it's a long chain of efforts little efforts every day and you know believe me every single effort can improve the condition so all the boys all the you know girls we have to start making some efforts every day governments you know they are also launching you know various schemes over the years for girls like beti bachao beti padhao and mahila shakti yojana sukanya samriddhi yojana and many more but as an individual guys we all have some responsibilities towards the women of the society if you know the women are provided you know proper educational facilities and encouraged to study more their level of confidence will increase no doubt in this and they also be aware of various topics many women you know worldwide are example of this we are you know proving ourselves wherever we go be it nikas founder be it kalpana chawla pt usha ritu kirdhal and nandini harinath from isro if you can recall the movie mission mangal so however you know we are also aware that we might be turning into the digital era but some parts of india today even still living in different centuries <laughs> because of the child marriage female feticide practices and you know violence against women it is still existing there the pay gap because of the gender is also problematic and in no way empowering anyone especially the women of the society and this pay gap is not the issue only in india it is everywhere even in usa it's existing glass ceiling is existing everyone so here i would like to add you know that good education is constructive in nature which constructs our future forever it helps a person to improve his or her status of mind body and spirit it also provides us lots of confidence by giving us bulk of knowledge in many fields it is a single and vital way to the success as well as the personal growth and there is no greater gift than education and if we you know really can empower a girl by our efforts we should definitely help and bring a change this change in the society so with the with these words you know i i thank you everyone for giving me this opportunity to talk on this you know theme which is of course you know close to the heart women empowerment so thank you so much thank you so much ma'am for inviting our guests in the audience joining us next is ms aisha gani ms aisha gani is an mc live host moderator corporate trainer and a certified happiness coach with 10 plus years of corporate experience in 30 plus countries ms aisha is one of the best known corporate mcs of india trusted by the top global brands of the world ms aisha gani is a certified happiness coach from berkeley institute of well being california usa now i welcome you ma'am for the session and i request you now to please give us the honor of listening to your knowledgeable talk audio is not playing ms sonali please check the audio is not playing start 
Sonali, please restart. Earlier, the sound was not playing. Kezia, are you listening? Kezia? Hi, everybody. Good morning. Hi, good morning, Aisha. Good morning to everybody. All right. So before I begin, can I request uh, all those people uh, who have the possibility of switching their cameras on? It would be nice. This is the second best thing that we can do. Of course, first being uh, interacting live. Yeah, because uh, what I aim with this conversation, and I say conversation because I want it to be a dialogue rather than just me be on the screen and being a monologue. Thank you. So uh, I could see a lot of familiar faces uh, before, and I think this is the apt time to thank once again to all the teachers and the mentors who molded us in shaped us into what we are today. And uh, I will forever be grateful. And I could, I could see a small glimpse of Dr. Johari. Wow, it's nice to see you all. Lovely. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Johari is also here. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Narula. Yeah, I I'm very. Happy. Yeah, we all are proud of you being the alumni of James, and doing great in your life. We are very happy to know this. Welcome. I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. And special thanks to Miss Sushmita for reaching out to me and for making me a part of this. I mean, nothing better than returning to your alma mater and giving back to the community that has shaped you into what you are today. So it's a great feeling. Thank you for including me into this webinar. Uh, First things first, uh, uh, I think we have a way to communicate with the, the students through the chat box. Is that a possibility? Yes, they can type in the chat box, yes, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So all my dear students, all my dear friends, uh, just just bola, I want it to be a dialogue. I want it to be a conversation. So just like you would have asked me questions when I, if I would have been with you in person, I want that to happen right now. Just, you know, let's take the efforts. Let's do this for ourselves. So first question that I'm going to ask since I'm a... Since I am a happiness coach, so the first question that I always ask wherever I go is, are we all happy today? Yes? All those who are happy, write it in the chat box and tell me, I'm happy. Come on, let's do this. Interactive, I told you, right? How many of us are happy? I don't want students to switch their camera off and uh, go on a walk. No, that's not happening today. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so, uh, first things first, uh, I congratulate Jim's VK and the internal committee for putting up uh, this webinar on uh, women empowerment through education. Uh, that's, a, that's, re that's the requirement of the moment. And uh, education has always been the need. Uh, and uh, what we are going to address today will <clears throat> is something that is indispensable to empowerment. What is indispensable to empowerment? to put forth our opinions, to be able to voice out what we think with clarity and with conviction and with confidence. I think that's the highest form of empowerment. I think Dr. Nidhi Gupta did it so well. I, uh, I was in awe of the uh, uh, facts and figures that you shared with us. Beautiful. Thank you so much for bringing that to our notice, madam. 
so uh, and if we are able to do that we are able to put forth our points uh, you know uh, with conviction with clarity with confidence i think there is nothing in the world that can stop you because honestly i have seen a lot of people with a lot of brilliance bahut talented hote hain aur bahut sari knowledge hoti hai but they are not able to put it across to the audience and what is the use of a knowledge which cannot be shared right so all my dear friends i would say friends to all of you because i don't want to sound old so <laughs> so uh, i think this human voice that we have that is an in the instrument that we play every single day uh, this is such a powerful tool my friends yes see, see this has the ability to start a war a human voice can start a war it can say i love you to somebody so there are there are so many things that we can do with one single instrument and tool in our life which is human voice if we learn to utilize it well and today i am here to give you some tips some uh, ways that we can help improve our communication to be a public speaker to uh, uh, overcome the stage fright and to beat performance anxiety so i am ready for it are you all ready yes i i told you you have to write it in the chat box and tell me are you ready okay somebody wrote partially happy okay let's uh, convert this to uh, fully happy by the end of the session i hope that happens <laughs> so um <clears throat> i will just in a brief capsule i will tell you about the last 12 years of my life just uh, uh, just to enforce your reinforce your belief into something that there is no particular way the right way to approach to the things from being a, a biotechnology student to being a journalism student at gems vk uh, to being a, a post graduate uh, in communication from genio genio to being a journalist to be a corporate speaker live host and anchor and now a happiness and a high performance coach and a corporate trainer uh, all the hats that i have donned over the last 12 years uh, i have been fortunate enough to be able to interact with some of the best minds of the world to be able to travel to 30 plus countries to be able to host and train and uh, do my live events in, for 2500 live events across the world over the span of 11 to 12 years of my career now the question is how did it all begin because it's not very long ago that it began it and all the and why do i want to share the story with you because uh, i think wo maine kahi padha tha ki if you are able to move but one mind change but one heart then in the evening of my life i can dare to whisper i have not lived in vain so if it can be uh, you know accepted and inculcated and felt by even one person today i think i would have made my purpose so uh, my dear friends uh, i will take you back to the year 2010 i used to stay with my parents in kanpur it's a small uh, city in uh, uttar pradesh uh, okay i can see my myself big and wide that's even better yes so so uh, in 2010 i just uh, freshly passed out of class 12 okay so uh, 12th pass kiya hai and i wanted my, i told i tell my parents that i want to continue my studies in mass communication now all the 90s parents uh, unko bas do hi cheeze aati thi either you could be a doctor or an engineer there is nothing there is no third thing in the world if you, especially if you are good in academics like a beta kuch acha karte hain so first uh, struggle waha tha i had to you know plead and beg and watch make them watch three idiots and do everything in my personal capacity to convince them and then i gave the exam cet and uh, i scored 92 rank and that's how i got admission in the premium institute of mass communication in india that is jims vk okay so to kanpur se delhi tak ka safar badi mushkilat se badi badi jaddo jehad karke maine pura kiya apne maa baap ko convince kiya so i uh, come from not from not from a very privileged background i come from a lower middle class family with limited resources big dreams but limited resources that's how it always was with us. that's how it always was for us so uh, in the in, in the initial uh, phase there were a lot of struggles uh, in fact i had to ask my mother so she had to sell off a few ornaments and some jewelry to help me just continue just start with, with my career in delhi and to just be here in the college so mujhe yaad hai abhi bhi she handed over that uh, bag of money to me and she told me nahi she did not tell me ja simran ja jile apni zindagi no she did not tell me that she told me beta this is all that i have and i trust you and i will want you 
to do these unhone mujhe jo char shabd uske baad bole i think that has stuck with me for ever and it is it is still with me here today she's not with me anymore but i think these four words have stuck with me forever she told me do whatever it takes aapki capacity mein jitna hai na wo karna jo bhi kar sakte ho to uh, i said yes and i came over to delhi to naya shehar naye log naye jazbaat needless to say i wasn't very comfortable in the first uh, uh, you know prime of se because uh, of a lot of uh, inhibitions that i had i was mocked at i was laughed about how i dressed how i looked how i spoke because kanpur se jab aate hain to hum ki tarah baat karte hain to a lot of ways that i was made fun of but uh, i think that's a beautiful memories when i look back in the past and i think that's uh, that's something that made you more confident and made you fiercer and made you more resilient uh thank god for the teachers uh, i always got full support from my teachers or abhi main agar yaad karu to my my twist with public speaking for the first time was on gym sweek stage wahi se mujhe mauka mila tha pehli bar to wahan se humne kara uske baad i used to <clears throat> be a part of lot of annual events that indrapas university does and in one of those events i'll keep my story quick because i understand the time constraint otherwise i could have flown i am uh, in my favorite place with my favorite people i could have gone go on and on and on but i will try to keep it <laughs> short so in in one of the events that happened uh, annual day so one of the sponsors i remember one of the sponsors walking up to me and he told me uh, would you like to be uh, would you like to host an event for us and at that point in time i didn't understand what hosting an event is or what a public speaker for that matter is so but the only uh, reason that i did it was uh, it was falling on the weekend and it they agreed to pay me some money and i think okay ye to achhi cheez hai kar sakte hain isko <laughs> so uh, so i remember preparing fiercely and i'm writing my scripts down and the first brand was wool mark i still remember i won't remember the event that i did yesterday uh, that was for ongc okay i remember but that was that is something that is inscribed in my memory you know it's etched into your memory so uh, vividly so uh, maine taiyari karna shuru kara aur mera pehla event tha ambience mall mein gurgaon mein so i the d day arrives and i go up to that mall or mai dekhti hu so it was the onset of christmas and i can see the entire mall decorated so beautifully it was like the entire delhi was in that mall uh, bade bacche boodhe everybody that i could see and that that is when the reality dawned upon me okay so i walk in slowly and i go up to my small little kiosk this is all decorated beautifully in, in red and white and the manager walks up to me he is dressed in uh, black uh, black suit fair tall and handsome and he extends this mic in front of me and he says okay are you ready and i look up at him और अभी तक जो मैं कर रही थी इन द कॉलेज इन द स्कूल एंड इन फ्रंट ऑफ माय फ्रेंड्स एंड इन फ्रंट ऑफ माय टीचर्स दैट वाज अ वेरी डिफरेंट बॉल गेम ऑल टुगेदर दे वर दोस वर फैमिलियर फेसेस दोस वर सपोर्टिव फेसेस वहां पर आई ऑनेस्टली इन दैट मोमेंट आई फ्रोज दैट माय फ्रेंड्स वाज द मोस्ट डेलिकेट मोमेंट ऑफ माय लाइफ एट दैट पॉइंट इन टाइम इफ आई आई थिंक इफ आई वुड हैव मैंने अपने आप को छोड़ दिया होता या इफ आई वुड हैव रिग्रेस फ्रॉम इट आई थिंक आई वुंट हैव बीन वेयर आई एम टुडे सो आई क्लोज माय आईज आई क्लेंच माय फिस्ट एंड आई क्लोज माय आईज एंड आई से टू माय सेल्फ डू व्हाट एवर इट टेक्स एज माय मदर टोल्ड मी डू व्हाट एवर इट टेक्स आई से दिस टू माय सेल्फ एंड देन आई से व्हाई एम आई हियर एंड देन समथिंग इनसाइड ऑफ मी आंसर ओके दैट आई हैव अ ड्रीम आई हैव अ ड्रीम टू बी नोन आई हैव अ ड्रीम टू बी रिकॉग्नाइज्ड आई हैव अ ड्रीम टू बी एंपावर्ड आई वांट आई हैव अ ड्रीम टू कॉल दिल्ली माय होम बिकॉज़ आई फेल्ट सो अनवेलकम हियर मुझे लगता है कभी कभी ना कुछ चीजें आपको और ज्यादा उसकी तरफ अट्रैक्ट करती हैं व्हेन यू डोंट डोंट गेट इट सो आई वाज सो बेंट अपॉन आई विल मेक दिल्ली माय होम सो फ्रॉम दैट पॉइंट इन टाइम जस्ट इन केस आई हैव गॉट टू होम्स इन दिल्ली सो नाउ आई एम वेरी हैप्पी दैट आई फाइनली मेन मैनेज टू मेक दिल्ली माय होम तो उस टाइम पे आई क्लेंच्ड माय फेस एंड आई सेड ओके आई विल डू इट आई विल डू इट एंड डू व्हाटएवर इट टेक्स एंड आई ओपन माय आईज एंड दैट एंड ही नज्ड मी ऑन द शोल्डर दैट मैनेजर एंड ही सेज आर यू श्योर यू कैन डू इट and uh, i channeled all my nervousness all my anxiety into energy blazing energy and for the next two hours my friends i spoke i laughed i joked i entertained of course it must not have been flawless i'm not saying that but the fact that i took the courage the leap of faith to try this i think that was a very uh, fulfilling pillar in the career now uh, from that kiosk 
to hosting and training at the biggest stages in the world. In 2019, I hosted at the biggest stage in the world, which is Studio 21 in Amsterdam, Europe. Uh, those kiosks in Amsterdam took the suffer. 2,500 live events later, 12 plus years later, I am sitting in front of you, giving you tips on public speaking. So the reason to tell you this story is two. Sabse pehla reason hai, no matter which background do you come from, my friends, my sisters, no matter which background do you come from, if you have the drive, if you have the zeal, and if you have the consistency, I always say consistency is more important than brilliance. I might be talented. I might have a lot of uh, knowledge. But if I don't do it consistently, no point. Nahi uska. Correct? One day talented, the other day bad. Jane ka koi matlab nahi hai. Consistency is the key. So uh, all of that happened. And I think public speaking uh, was not just a skill for me. Public speaking was a life skill. Because it made me who I am today. It made me, it was a ticket to a better life for me. It gave me all that I wanted. I wanted to be recognized. I wanted to be honored. I wanted to be known. I wanted to be empowered. I wanted to do things for people who are close to me. I never wanted to see the, the helpless face of my mother again. So I had a lot of strong reasons. Yet another reminder that have, you have to have a strong reason in order for you to carve your way forward. When the reason is strong, when you wake up in the morning, you have a drive. एक होता है कुछ करना है एक होता है जुनून से करना है तो दोनों में बहुत फर्क होता है सो या सो इसका दो रीजन था स्टोरी बताने का पहला चीज ये कि आप कुछ भी कर सकते हैं और दूसरा रीजन है स्टोरी बताने का दैट दिस आल्सो हैपेंस टू बी द फर्स्ट लेसन इन पब्लिक स्पीकिंग माय फ्रेंड्स द आर्ट ऑफ स्टोरी टेलिंग टड़ा सो इफ इफ द टीम कैन हेल्प मी पुट अप द प्रेजेंटेशन प्लीज so what I did just now with you all is that I told you a story. Now it is very important for us to, he never make a point without telling a story and never tell a story without making a point. Okay, always remember that stories are the best way that you can connect instantly with people. They are going to feel that you are one of them. And when you're one of some, something, it flows, correct? Next slide, please. Yes, the first one. Next, next. I mean, next, yeah. Yeah, the art of storytelling is the first uh, way of, uh, you know, interacting with your audience to tell them, to make them involved, to be with them in the emotions. When I was clenching my fist, you were with me in that moment, weren't you? Yes. So this is the magic that you have to have when you're on the stage, when you have to interact your, with your audience in a way that you have emotions in your words. It's not just words, but the emotion with your words that can actually make you reach where you want to. So let's move on to the next point. What is that? The only person judging you is you, my friend. So I, this is my favorite. So I'll tell you something. कई बार होता है कि ऐसा नहीं है कि हमारे पास knowledge नहीं है या हमें पता नहीं है. लेकिन because we speak with people around us all the time. I never believe anybody who tells me I cannot go up on the stage and speak. Why? Because you talk to your friends, okay? You talk to your teachers, you talk to your family, you talk to people, you talk to your neighbors, you talk to them all the time. One-on-one -on -one conversation, hota hai, correct? You make jokes, you make them entertain, you make them a lot of things. But when you're asked to do the same exact thing up on the stage in front of a bunch of people, you freeze and you say, I have anxiety issues. Why does that happen? Capacity mein dikkat nahi hai. Delivery mein dikkat hai. Aur kyun dikkat hai? Because we have the innate fear of being judged. We think that, uh, oh my God, uh, I might not be good enough. I might not be eloquent enough. I might not come across as smart enough. So this is primarily the reason. And now what, now problem pata chal gai. What is the solution? What can you do to overcome that fear of being judged? Talk to yourself, my friends. Self-talk, the words that you say to yourself are the most important words in the whole world. कोई आपको और बता रहे कि आप ये कर सकते हो या आप नहीं कर सकते, आप खुद को क्या बता रहे हो? That is the most important. Okay, okay. Next slide, please. 
सेट अ क्लियर इंटेंशन यस प्लीज डू नॉट बी एम्बिगुअस आपको यू प्रिपेयर योर ओन स्क्रिप्ट मेक योर ओन स्क्रिप्ट बिलीव इन योर स्क्रिप्ट डू नॉट से समथिंग दैट सम एल्स हैज रिटन बिकॉज यू विल नॉट यू विल लैक कन्विक्शन इन इट है ना क्लैरिटी होनी चाहिए ऑलवेज अप्रोच द डायस और द स्टेज दैट यू आर एट विथ सिंगल फोकस माइंड आज मुझे सिर्फ पब्लिक स्पीकिंग के बारे में बात करनी सो आई विल आई विल नॉट डाइग्रेस मैं हैप्पीनेस कोच के बारे में बात नहीं करूंगी मैं ट्रेनिंग के बारे में बात नहीं करूंगी आई विल ओनली यूज एक्सपीरियंसिस एंड फैक्ट विच विल री आइटोरेट ऑन द फैक्ट ऑफ हाउ टू बी अ बेटर पब्लिक स्पीकर बी फोकस्ड लिखो अब शुरू में क्या होता है यू हैव टू बी यू हैव टू टेक अ लॉट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस फॉर दैट सो यू कैन वॉट यू कैन डू इज यू कैन स्टिक टू द स्क्रिप्ट Until you uh, develop it up naturally, you stick to the script. अपने script लेके जाइए उसके साथ stick करिए. Next please. Yes, this is my favorite. Don't try to overcome it, my friends. Get used to it. Now this is not an illness or a disease that you want to defeat. ये कुछ ऐसा थोड़ा है. This is a skill that you want to hone. Now. एनी स्किल फॉर दैट मैटर आपको साइकिलिंग करनी है आपको बैडमिंटन खेलना है आपको स्विमिंग सीखनी है एनी थिंग दैट यू हैव टू डू इन लाइफ वॉट डू यू डू यू डू इट मोर एंड मोर एंड मोर अंटिल यू गेट अ हैंग ऑफ इट दैट इज एक्जैक्टली द सेम थिंग दैट यू डू विथ पब्लिक स्पीकिंग दर इज नथिंग डिफरेंट ओके प्रैक्टिस प्रैक्टिस एंड प्रैक्टिस ऑल द ज्ञान दैट आई गिविंग यू राइट नाउ इफ यू डोंट पुट इट इन टू प्रैक्टिस इट वॉन्ट हेल्प यू नाउ आई विल टेल यू अ टर्म दैट वी यूज इन साइकोलॉजी नोन एज सिस्टमैटिक डिसेंसिटाइजेशन Now, what does it mean? Is when you expose yourself to a stimuli over a period of time, your mind stops to think about it as a threat. I will simplify it and tell you. जब हम कोई horror movie पहली बार देखते हैं, क्या होता है? You're scared, right? कोई Annabelle देखी या जो भी I don't follow horror movies anyway. So जो भी आपको horror movie लगती है, ठीक है? ऐसा क्या होता है? Your palms are sweating and your heart is palpitating and then you're not even getting up in the middle of the night to go to the loo. You you are so anxious, correct? But what if you see that movie again and again and again and again? By the time you see that movie for the twentieth time, are you still scared? Tell me this. You're not. because your mind has become used to of it our mind is very smart it doesn't want to uh, you know scare you of the things that you already know ye to pata hai ye wala threat to naya hai matlab purana hai kuch naya lekar aao so when you expose to the stimuli of public speaking pehli bar karo do bar karo char bar karo panch bar karo 500 bar karo and then slowly and gradually you will develop that inside of you every opportunity that you get my friends be it in front of your friends be it in front of the class be it in front of a small group of friends anything Don't lose out on that opportunity. In cash it, because it's the right way. Guilty, do it. Learn it, and that is the way to it. This way, I can't tell you anything. In 12 years, I've learned everything. 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 I've Okay, next one, please. Greet your anxiety. Yes, yes, yes. It's very important. Now, what do I tell you? आपने स्क्रिप्ट बना ली, ठीक है? आपने तैयारी बहुत अच्छे से कर ली है. Now you are standing backstage, और पूरा lights और spotlight stage पर है, और आपका आवाज, आपका नाम call out होता है, and you're about to go to the stage. अब मैं ये नहीं बोल सकती कि नहीं anxious, anxiety नहीं होगी. Anxiety होगी. because this is a very natural quality of a person how do you deal with it deal with an anxiety i spoke to you first about self talk you say to yourself this is how 96% of the people in the world face it and i am no different and the rest 3% are lying because this is the quality that is an acquired talent koi mujhe bata sakta hai yahan par which is the biggest fear in the world batao write it in the chat box and tell me what is the biggest fear in the world or you can also uh, unmute yourself and tell me what do you think is the biggest fear in the world kya yeah. hai when generally people say that what other people will say i'm i'm sorry what did you say i said generally uh, the fear is like what the other people will think or what the other ah, fear of being judged you say yeah okay absolutely any other any other person Who wants to tell? Who? What is the biggest fear in the world? Pure jahan me. Is it acrophobia, the fear of insects, or is it hydrophobia, the fear of water, or is it fear of heights? Consider. 
कोई लिख रहा है फियर इट सेल्फ कोई लिख रहा है बींग इग्नोर्ड ओके आई थिंक आई एम गेटिंग डायरेक्ट मैसेज मैसेजेस ओके आई कैन सी अलॉट ऑफ पार्टिसिपेशन हियर वेरी नाइस इमेज कॉन्शियसनेस ओके वेरी नाइस right so these are all part of the problem that we are approaching so the biggest fear in the world my friends is glassophobia glassophobia is the fear of public speaking with 96% of the people in the world face it now this is such an important fear तो अभी अगर किसी को है भी सो दैट्स ओके ग्रीट योर एंजाइटी से दैट नाइंटी सिक्स परसेंट ऑफ द पीपल इन द वर्ल्ड हैव इट एंड आई हैव इट टू एंड आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू विन थ्रू इट दैट इज इट यू प्रिपेयर यू प्रिपेयर फियरसली दैट्स अन अदर थिंग ओके कैन वी मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन प्लीज visualizing okay so this is uh, one of my favorite so i always say that before i am uh, about to step up on the stage my friends i exactly know how my next 5 uh, 7 10 10 minutes are going to look like yeah so you do this before anything important in your life you're going for an interview you going for uh, to write an exam you going to do anything which is uh, of importance to you you visualize it for example when i am about to go up on the stage i always visualize ki ye mera pehla sentence hai this is how i'm going to begin my uh, evening this is how i'm going to say the greetings this is the name of the corporate that i'm going to say these are the name of the delegates that i'm going to take i while maintaining a bright beautiful smile and uh, this is the first course matlab i i function it in my head 1 2 3 4 5 6 i have step 1 step 2 step 3 step 6 in my head now the possibility of getting wrong here decreases kyunki aapne already visualize kar rakha hai how it looks now i'll give you a very uh, good example so there was this uh, very famous footballer who managed to deliver the most historic kick in the history of uh, football and when the reporter walks up to him and asks uh, how is it that you managed to land such a brilliant kick and he answers because i have played that kick in my mind 100 times ye ground pe aaj kara hai maine but i have already played it in my mind 100 times so what you think is what will manifest itself so all that law of attraction uh, the secret the matching the wavelength of your mind to the wavelength of the things that you need in life that's a story for another session but that all holds very true my friends moving on to the next one please authenticity awareness and audacity yes authenticity kya hua authenticity is be yourself when i am talking to you today i am speaking from my heart it is not uh, something that uh, you know the facts and figures of course you can take care of uh, to remember but then speak your heart out be really mai bar bar bolti hu ki write your own scripts be very convinced with what you are going to say only then you can bring about that emotion in people people's mind i have to have emotions in my words in order to invoke emotions inside of you if i'm going to sit here and talk with a straight face watch me public speaking is an important skill and we should all work very hard to develop that skill how did you find this do you think that is going to make an influence on people do you think that people are going to remember you after that no because you have to instill emotions in your words you have to make them feel words are so powerful you have to make them stir okay write your scripts in a way now awareness what do i say what do i mean by awareness is you have to be aware of the situation and the people that you are interacting with for example i have hosted shows in jamshedpur and japan the, is my dialect of addressing the audience the same no is my way of communication the same no is my emotions in the words the same no you are not a good speaker until you make sense to your audience i might be a fantastic speaker i might have uh, uh, get i might have uh, gotten a lot of accolades in my career but if i am unable to make sense to you today right now i'm no good that's what and a speaker should always believe in you're as good as your last speech always remember audacity audacity means to be able to share your story to be vulnerable maine starting mein aapse story share kari i could have skipped that main seedhe in pointers pe aa jati lekin kya wo connect aapke sath mera banta us us waqt nahi banta kyunki uh, vulnerability has a lot of power inside of it if it is used in a right way if you are not using your story that's okay you can use someone else's story ओके okay, इतने सारे इंस्पायरिंग फिगर्स होते हैं इतने सारे पैरालंपिक चैंपियंस होते हैं इतने सारे बहुत सारे इंस्पिरेशनल लोग हैं जैसे मैडम ने अभी बताया था कि 
Kalpana Chawla se leke there are so many uh, women who have done so fantastically well you can quote those stories and then you can weave your story into it and deliver a message it will impact and it will enhance the quality of your speech so much next please okay be quick to adapt and change as per the situation now i'm going to give you a example abhi aapne bola ki aap script follow kariye please hai na aapko script lekar jana hai aur prepare karna hai bahut acche se kaam karna hai rehearse karna hai aur fir jana hai now what if something doesn't work in the way that you have planned aap kya karte ho do you still stick to the script or do you make an effort to adapt and change i'll give you an example i was hosting on the stage of uh, i was in munich okay in germany and i was hosting for saint gobain in the year 2019 end जब मैं वहां पहुंचती हूँ तो मुझे ये पता चलता है दैट द ऑडियंस दैट आई एम गोइंग टू एड्रेस टूडे दे लाइक फाइव हंड्रेड ऑट पीपल इन द ऑडियंस एंड ऑल ऑफ देम आर फ्रॉम डिफरेंट नेशनैलिटीज सबके सब अलग अलग जगह से हैं एंड मोस्ट ऑफ देम ओवर थर्टी टू फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द ऑडियंस डिड नॉट अंडरस्टैंड इंग्लिश ऑल्सो अभी कम्युनिकेटर और ऑडियंस के बीच में एक ही तो थ्रेड होता है टू बी एप द लैंग्वेज नाउ इफ दे डोंट अंडरस्टैंड माई लैंग्वेज दैट आई एम टॉकिंग इन अब वो उर्दू नहीं समझते वो अरबी नहीं समझते वो हिंदी नहीं समझते वो अंग्रेजी नहीं समझते दैट्स ऑल द फोर लैंग्वेजेस दैट आई नो सो व्हाट डू आई डू नाउ आई गेट एंशियस ओके बट आई ऑलवेज से लिटिल एंशियसनेस इज गुड फॉर यू बिकॉज दैट मेक्स यू प्रिपेयर फियर्सली सो वॉट आई डेड इट आई थॉट ऑन द टॉप ऑफ माई हैट एंड आई सेट इंस्टेड ऑफ मूविंग ऑन द स्टेज लाइक लाइक द डिफॉल्ट प्रोग्राम हमें स्टेज पर आना होता है विद स्पॉट लाइट एंड से समथिंग आई सेट आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू डू दैट बट आई एम गुरादो गोइंग टू मेक एन एंट्री थ्रू द ऑडियंस ऑडियंस के बीच में से मैं आऊंगी यू गुड गिव मी द स्पॉट लाइट अमिट्स द पीपल सो आई मेक एन एंट्री थ्रू द बैक डोर सो ऑडियंस और आगे स्क्रीन पे सब कुछ दिख रहा होता है एंड दे यू नो नो पीछे मुड़कर देखा और मैं चल कर आ रही हूँ विद द स्पॉट लाइट विद द म्यूजिक एंड द यू नो वट दट वट द म्यूजिक दट आई चोज फॉर दैट डे Have you heard of that song? Because I am happy. Na 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 na. See, I don't even know the lyrics of this song, but I tell you, the start of that evening was marvelous. It was remarkable because all the five hundred people, all of them, got out from their seats and we danced and we moved around and we laughed and that's how and they clapped. it was thunderous round of applause from 500 people in munich kin ke sath jinki bhasha bhi mujhe nahi aati so you have to find quick innovative ways to always keep up to it it is not one uh, size fits all aaj jo kara hai to kal bhi wahi chalega aur kal jo kara hai wo parso chalega nahi aaj jo mera format hai uh, aapse baat karne ka wo bahut farak hai abhi kal maine ongc ka event kiya hai with 250 people on ground event that format was very very different so you have to uh, change and adapt and practice practice as i said next one please speak in the language of your audience my friend jaise maine isme bhi पहले मैं बताया कि यू आर ओनली अ गुड कम्युनिकेटर इफ यू आर एबल टू कनेक्ट विद योर ऑडियंस अगर आपकी ऑडियंस uh, भोजपुरी uh, समझती है हिंदी समझती है जो भी समझती है वो स्पीक इन द लैंग्वेज दैट दे आर कंफर्टेबल इन नाउ इफ आई एम होस्टिंग अ कॉन्फ्रेंस फॉर लास्ट एन एंड टू ब्रो आई कैन नॉट स्पीक इन हिंदी और भोजपुरी और कॉन्वर्जेशनल लैंग्वेज आज मैं आपसे इस तरह से बात कर रही हूँ इन अ कॉन्वर्जेशनल टोन बिकॉज आई बिकॉज यूर यंग पीपल जेन जी जनरेशन एज आई कॉल इट सो आई वॉन्टेड टू बी मोर कॉन्वर्जेशनल मोर फ्रेंडली so you have to always visualize your audience and understand the background of them before you craft your speech before you script out the words that you are going to address them with okay let's move on to the next one handling embarrassing situations with guests this is my favorite and the most important i tell you i save the best for the last they say so uh abhi aapne taiyari kar li hai theek hai aapne scripting kar li hai aapne पूरी तरह से आप यू आर वेल रिहर्स एंड यू आर गोइंग अप ऑन द स्टेज एंड एवरीथिंग इज वर्किंग फाइन फॉर यू बट कुछ गलत हो जाए विच इज नॉट इन कंट्रोल ऑफ यू द स्क्रीन में फॉलो ऑफ द माइक कैन स्टॉप वर्किंग यू कैन फॉरगेट अ नेम ऑफ इंपॉर्टेंट पर्सन वट डू यू डू दैट अभी द डैमेज इज डन अभी तक हम बात कर रहे हैं कि टू प्रोटेक्ट टू प्रिवेंट द डैमेज फ्रॉम हैपनिंग बट देर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी दैट दिस विल हैपन बारह सालों में ऐसा नहीं है कि हर चीज परफेक्ट थी बहुत सारी चीजें दिक्कतें थी आई एम गोइंग टू टेल यू अबाउट अ लाइव स्टोरी ऑफ माई लाइफ 
So uh, this was in Hyderabad in the year 2018. And I was hosting for one of the biggest telecom companies in the world. I will not take the name. And I had in front of me, it was an HICC convention, which is known for humongous audience. Okay. So us mein, uh, 10, se, 12, ke log, uh, beech mein the. so many people together. The stage was 50 by 50, larger than life setup. We had performers from all across the globe. It was one of its kind of an evening and I was the host. Now I give my, my uh, I'm backstage and I give myself a pep talk. Okay. All the things that I told you just now, you know, I always say that emotions are a reflection of the motion in your body. So I give myself a little, I jump two to three times. I always do that before jumping on to the li live stage. So I do all of that. Okay. Or uske baad, lights, camera, and action or lights, camera, and action movie ka alag hota hai, usme dubara shoot karne ka aapke paas option hota hai, live stage mein nahi hota hai. Bandhuk se nikli goli or moose se nikli boli. There is nothing, there is no other way that you can prevent or protect it. So now there are lights, there are camera and there's action, there's spotlight on me, the, there's pin drop silence. There is 10,000 people in front of me and I walk, start to walk on the stage. And I say, good evening, Hyderabad. Mera ye sentence complete bhi ho paya tha. I was in my third step and I stumbled on the live stage. I was wearing this six feet of beautiful long gown, the princess fairy gown, and that made me fall flat on the ground. Now understand, thus hazar log mere saamne hai. This is the biggest stage in the world. This music is shut. It's pin drop silence. Now there are only two things which can happen in this situation. Number one, I let the situation get better of me and let people feel sorry about me. One of these things. Second thing is, I take charge of the situation. What do you think that I did? You take charge. Okay. And I will also tell you, because I have told story, I will tell you how to do this. So that just in case, you can, it can help you in your future endeavors. I rose back up with all the grace left in my gown. <laughs> I rose back up. I smiled and I said, this is what I said. Girte hai shah sawar hi maidan e jang mein. Girte hai shah sawar hi maidan e jang mein. Wo tifl kya gire jo ghutno ke bal chale. A big round of applause. For <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. And that is exactly what happened. For all those people who didn't understand, Urdu ka hai hai, yes ka matlab hota hai. If you, only the people who dare to get up and walk are the people who are, who can fall down. Jinnoh ne kabhi uthne ki koshish nahi kari, wo girenge kaise. Sahi baat hai. Aur usme 8-10 hazaar logo ne ek saath mil kar taliya bajaye hai mere liye. And I rose back up, acquired my dignity and carried on with the show like nothing happened. Okay, I told my event manager that so many of us are not going to be in the show, but you are going to be more than you are. So I'm just saying, ki, you know, kuch, jab aisa lagta hai, this is the end of the life. Oh my God, there's nothing from here. My friends, just, you know, think about it. Do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes. Always remember these four words. And the next slide, please. Please remember this. Say it to yourself. It is a teachable art. It is a learnable skill. It is an acquired talent. Please never, never say this. Ki mujhe bolna nahi aata hai aur main bol nahi sakti hu aur main yahan nahi ja sakti. Because understand women that we are talking about women empowerment here. Or jab empowerment tab aati hai when you are able to voice out your opinions. Agar aap bol nahi paenge, apni baat nahi kya paenge, to empowerment to bhat dure na. I might get all the education in the world, but if I am not able to put my education to practice. What is the point? Aaj mein itna sab kuch seek ki agar mein aapko bata na paun, apne experiences na share kar paun, how will you benefit from it? Hai na? So, aap mujhe chai yaad rakho, na rakho, me chai ye yaad rakhna, it is a teachable art. And ek aur cheez jo mein aapse zaroor uh, guzarish karoon ki yaad rakhne ki is do whatever it takes. Never forget that. And with that, my friends, thank you so much. And it's always a pleasure to come back. 
एंड यस दिस रिमाइंड्स मी यू कैन ऑलवेज एक घंटे में पब्लिक स्पीकिंग नहीं सीख सकते हैं आई अंडरस्टैंड बट बट वॉट आई टोल्ड यू टूडे विल कम हैंडी फॉर यू वेन यूर क्राफ्टिंग योर स्पीचेस एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो बिकॉज यू आर ऑल आर माई फेवरेट दिस इज वेर आई ग्रो अप फ्रॉम यू कैन ऑलवेज रीच आउट टू मी एंड आई विल बी हैप्पी टू आंसर ओके यू कैन कनेक्ट विद मी ऑन लिंक इन एंड इंस्टाग्राम Uh, my website is aishagani.com my email is info@aishagani.com you can always write to me and i will be more than happy to assist to guide and to take the lead and help you in whatever way that i can because at the end of the day we have to work together in order to empower and i thank once again to the entire team of gym sweek and all my dear dear teachers for making me a part of it thank you Thank you, ma'am. I'm sure, just like me, all other attendees have learned a lot from my informative session. Now, Ruko, Ruko. I would like to request let's, let's do Dr. Nidhi right Chowdhury, head Department of Media and Communication. Just one minute, beta. Yeah, Aisha, continue. I was trying to tell. What, what is your name, darling? Her name is Riddhi. Riddhi, Riddhi, Riddhi. My name is Riddhi. Riddhi, Riddhi. First of all, smile. Come and show me how you do it. You have such a beautiful smile. Why do you have to talk with a straight face? And then you say we are we are very happy to have you. No, <laughs> we are very happy to have you. <laughs> Emotions in your words are very important. Yes, I hope yes, you are going to inculcate it. All the best, Rudi. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Now I would like to request Dr. Neeru Jhori, Head Department of Media and Communication, and ex presiding officer of Internal Committee, to enlighten our guests and audience. Ma'am, we are unable to hear you. Ma'am, please unmute yourself. And we can't hear you. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, ma'am, we are not able to hear you. Maybe we can uh, try adjusting the volume in your. Uh... device madam Am I audible now? Yes, you yes, are. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. Ah, uh, see, Doctor Jory's phone was not working. I think something was wrong there. But nice to see you, Aisha. I'm sitting in T three. Oh, lovely. Camera, be kar do se. Yes. That was your room. Your classroom, T three. I'm wow, sitting in yeah. T three. Oh wow! Wow! Nice. Yeah. Yes. Nostalgia. This is the classroom <laughs> where I taught you. Remember? Absolutely. That is one of the fondest memories of my life. Um, I th I would request host to un uh, you know unlock the camera for this student. Just say I'm talking to you. Okay. 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 And yeah. it's a nice feeling, you know, when you spoke about your journey of life. I would also like to share with students your journey of life. I have seen you grow. In two thousand twelve, I still remember when we are I and uh, uh, most of the. 
I asked a lot of students to, yes, now. Yay, finally I, I can see you. Yes, so it's so nice to see you. When I asked, remember on this podium, me, Ritu Sood, a lot of faculties were there. Uh, Smanaski, we asked you to speak for five minutes and teach us. So there I could see your confidence, your smile. And I, I still, you know, that was, I, I consider that was one of your milestones in your journey of life, the, the kind, the way you handle all the faculties. I think that was beautiful. I still remember it. I share that example with my students. And apart, you know, what all you have included in your presentation in the art of storytelling, all those points were there. Whether public speaking. I, let's go to women empowerment. Public speaking is an art and science. Absolutely, you have to have your points on the tips. It's an art because how you express yourself, I completely agree with what Aisha was saying. And when it comes to Indian context, women still do not have the voice to raise their opinion. Since it's a, it, it's a session on women empowerment, still they are the second citizens, their voices are muted. Uh, they, their voices are not to be, you know, they are not to be spoken in society. They are not to be quoted. They are not. They are not. They have not given the right to complain, and they have to. They have been taught from their childhood leave a certain segment of population to, you know, to suffer in silence, and this is not a good thing for peace, prosperity, and harmony of a developing nation or society. And right, since you are a happiness coach also, so I thought, let me also, you know, shower my views on that. So, you know, you have to speak out, whether it is boys or girls, irrespective of gender, you have to speak out, you have to have the courage of speaking your emotions. And your emotions are very, very important. Absolutely. Once you give voice to your emotions, then only people will start understanding your emotions whether it is a school, whether it is a family, whether it is a college, whether it is Department of Media and Communication Studies or my students or any students. Absolutely. Speaking is very important because I still believe communication is the only way which, you know, can give you solutions. And like you shared, you know, from Jamshedpur to Japan, I completely agree with you. You know, jaisa desh, waisa basic muhavra hai na. So you have to adapt. Uh, to what you are saying. And it, there is no, uh, when you were sharing, uh, you know, apart from that, there is, one should not have hesitation in accepting your mistakes. We are all, you know, we are all not perfect. We can mis make mistakes, whether on stage, whether in teaching, and it's, we should have the courage to accept that gracefully. Maybe I've taught something wrong. I do not know any of the answers to the questions raised by the students. Yeah, and I should human. have the confidence of telling them. I can definitely go back. Tomorrow we can have a discussion on it. So I think uh, in context of women empowerment, this is very important. Women need to learn to speak. Boys need to learn to speak. And when it comes not only to speaking, I, I still you know, feel because the topic of today's role of women in empowerment, education. Uh, and we have, we present still a quite sorry a picture when it comes to, you know, um, Literacy uh, indicators for male, it is 84% and for female, it is still between 65 to 68%. And when it comes to, you know, indicators of gender gap, we are very, very low. We are 140 when it comes to 156 nations. And those gender empowerment, those, you know, empowering means you talk about political participation, you talk about education, you talk about health, you talk about survival and you talk about workforce. So when you combine these five indicators, India is still very, very behind. It is still, you know, it's a lot of needs to be, lot needs to be done. And when it talks to, you refer to women, you know, in uh, gender, uh, in uh, sustainable development goals, we are still very, very far behind. But when I see young women rising like you, I feel very proud. Or when I have reached a situation, I feel very proud that I'm a woman. And, you know, I can handle many things much more gracefully than my colleagues. At times, I'm not boasting of it. God has given me that, you know, superpower of being, uh, you know, nurturing 
that nurturing role, like Dr. Thar said, the caregiver role. So I feel very proud that I've been, you know, uh, given that role of uh, being a nurturer, nurturer, and uh, that is very important. And if you nurture your children well, if you nurture uh, your peer well, if you nurture people around you well, I think a lot of gender disparity indexes, indices can be worked upon. Absolutely. And in adding, adding to what you're stereotyping. Yeah. Anybody can be on that stage where you are. You need hard work, like you share. You need a lot of hard work, a lot of, you know, uh, to sustain yourself. It's not an easy task. And when I see your Facebook post or post anywhere, like yesterday you said you had done a session with AGMs and DGMs of NTPC, I was very proud. So, you know, you have made not only me proud as head of the department, as your mentor, I would not say mentor, as somebody who taught you. But I think you have made Jim's proud. See, my students are have logged in here. Can you all say hi to her? And yes. Can hey, you everybody. So, I you know, wish, that and I hope that I see all of you in I, person very I, soon. I, it's, it's not going to be a strange thing. And five years from now, somebody would be, you know, stepping in those shoes. And it's a proud feeling. And well done, young woman. I know you've won many awards. Well done. You know, uh, there's a long journey you have to cover up. And uh, I'm very happy that, you know, uh, you're proud of your, uh, your roots. You're proud of your uh, institution, which has groomed you. And uh, you have been trying for so long. But I think no better opportunity would have been here addressing your young woman, addressing uh, or spelling out her thoughts in the modern world. So that's very, very important. And one more clarification. Dr. Narula is the presiding officer of internal committee currently. So, I used to yeah, be there. I've actually, ma'am, she that. said, ex, and one more feather in your cap, ma'am. Ma and thank you all. And keep scaling new heights. Aisha, uh, thank you, Dr. Narula. Thank you, all the organizers. And thank you, Sushmita, for connecting me to this beautiful young lady. And uh, I'm so happy. And so uh, really, I can't uh, wait to see you. keep scaling new heights. My only and of course, I would just like to conclude with this. You know, the role of education is very, very important. Uh, I, Mahatma Gandhi said, each one, teach one. And if a woman is educated, her whole family, you know, four to five members, have husband, wife, and two yeah. children. So education is very important. And please, uh, wherever you are, this young boys and girls, wherever you are, you know, attain education, change yourself. Like you said, you know, uh, change is the, you know, change has to be sustainable if you change your thought process. And please learn the one thing I really like, don't let people judge you. You are your own judge. And if you judge yourself well, if you have the art of, if you believe in self-reflection, I think you have not given the power of judging yourself to others. Absolutely. Because most of us do not self-reflect. And once you start self-reflecting, you know, how you have to grow in life, I think Nothing can be more beautiful. Stop judging people. And since I've seen your, you know, uh, presentations on as a life coach, as happiness coach, um, I think nothing is more beautiful than spreading, giving love, joy to everybody in this world. This is a happiness week also. 13th to 19th is a happiness week, world yeah. happiness yeah. week. And uh, I'm feeling very happy to be a part of this very beautiful, you know, uh, webinar organized by Internal Committee of Jim Swasand Kunj. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Jory, for those kind Thank of you. Beautiful. Over to the next session. Yes. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your precious time. Now we have among us Ms. Preeti Singh, Deputy General, National Real Estate Development Council and founder of Satwa Nation. Satwa Nation work on eight dimensions of wellness, occupational, emotional, spiritual, environmental, financial, physical, social, and intellectual. Each dimension of wellness is interrelated with another and is equally vital in the pursuit of optimum health. One can reach an optimum level of wellness by understanding how to maintain and optimize each of the dimensions of wellness. She has been a top ranked sales manager with the six years of history of sales success, recognized for contribution to record, setting sales figure, territory startup and expansion, and new business development, 
below mentioned are some of our key roles new account development key accounts and business planning strategic marketing presentations and proposals sales training relationship building and program initiative management i now request you ma'am to enlighten our audience with an with a knowledgeable talk Uh, ma'am please switch on your camera and audio Ma'am, are you there? attendees please wait for a while there have been some technical issues Good afternoon, everyone. Am I audible now? Yes, ma'am. You're audible. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Jims, uh, for inviting me. It is always a pleasure to come back home. I call it home because th this must be my fifth or sixth seminar with uh, Jims, uh, especially uh, the Vasant Kuj and Kalka Ji's have been the routine uh, with us. And it is a thorough pleasure. Uh, before I move on with my topic, which is uh, women holistic growth in today's time, I would like to thank all my fellow speakers uh, for the amazing and uh, the pep talk which was given by uh, Aisha. who is also the alumni of uh, gyms uh, that was really amazing now moving ahead and looking at the time i'm sure there's a time constraint and we are already uh, one hour beyond the time so quickly i would like to take 15 minutes on uh, my uh, view what we have been working as in the introduction everybody knows that i work as a deputy director general with a uh, national real estate development council which is under the ministry of housing and urban affair also i am the founder of a holistic wellness platform called satwa nation 
now as the theme and the topic uh, for today is about women and the education and women role in the society and education role uh, in the holistic growth of a women there are eight dimensions which i would like to uh, share today which contributes a lot in a women's holistic growth first attribute is the physical fitness and wellness as we have been uh, talking a lot about physical fitness and immunity building and being fit and fine to even uh, cope up with the corona uh, virus and uh, past two years have been really difficult for all of us so this is very very important for all the women folks to be physically fit because uh, as a woman our body also goes through a lot especially um, uh, hormonal changes and uh, there are a lot of hormonal imbalances and physical changes a woman goes through before marriage post marriage and post um, age of 40 so physical fitness is the first foremost uh, attribute where we must uh, pay the most attention second goes the emotional and mental wellness of course women is a multitasker we do lot of work at the same time so we juggle a lot uh, between a lot of chaos especially we do the balance work mental wellness and emotional well being uh, women are uh, with god grace are uh, mentally and emotionally a stronger creature i believe that we are the most beautiful creatures of uh, uh god and even the earth is called mother earth because mother knows only to give so unconditional love she gives to her family members and conditional love she gives to the own child so mother is a nurturer but at the same time what she needs the most is the emotional care the emotional well being so it's very important for all of us to pay the attention to our own emotions and mental health now the third most important attribute for a women holistic growth is occupational wellness we at satwa nation we believe and uh, me myself working uh, almost 8 years uh, in the real estate sector as a dgg narrat who have realized that every woman must give some time to her occupational wellness which is to her ambition and to her career in today's time there is no difference in a boy child a girl child and a boy boy child rather i have seen the parents prefer a girl child more because um, i don't know how the concepts have changed over a period of time but this is really amazing to see that the couples have have this mentality that boy and girls are same and even if we see the 2022 year of uh, uh, international women's day theme is also gender equality but having said that when we are giving the same kind of an education and treatment to our uh, girls why can't we give them the same occupational platform also uh, there is uh, every girl child has a dream to become something and their parents of course nurture them gives them the best of the qualification but why she has to give up her career and her um, aspirations after marriage because there are added responsibilities she is a mother she is a wife she is a daughter in law but at the same time she is an aspiring woman she is an ambitious woman she has a career to pursue and she has a hunger for her own occupational wellness so every woman should be given the equal opportunity to pursue her career and our society and the family members must support her it should not be an added load on her and even for the filthy rich families uh, you know when a woman is working going out um, and working it, it doesn't mean that she is a bread and butter earner she is not working to run the house she is working to have that self identity and there we mistake nowadays i have seen in a lot of business communities there are uh, uh, women those who are toppers in the school their colleges their gold medalists but after marriage they they have been married to a filthy rich family and they say there is no need for her to work but then work does not mean that she is going out to earn the bread and butter for the family she is working because she is a learned person she is an intellectual person and she has to have an occupational wellness and she has to be independent financially to have that self respect for herself so occupational wellness is the most important attribute in a women holistic growth in today's time fourth one is social wellness all of us whether it's men or a woman we are 
the um, social animals but then the time we spend with our family and friends and uh, this is saying you know ki man ki baat kisi se karne se man halka hota hai we all have our own life lessons we all have our own circumstances and situations and our own small little big fights to cope up with on a regular basis but then connecting with the one who understands us is very very important and that comes the social wellness and that that plays a very very important role in our overall holistic growth then comes to the environmental wellness connecting to the mother earth environmental wellness is very important nowadays because all of us are made of five tatvas agni jal prithvi vayu and aakash and going back to the basics you know no matter how much gold or diamonds we have no matter how many brands i own but at the end of the day what i need is a good body a uh, clean air to breathe in and of course the good people good vibrations around me and good food to eat so that's how the environmental wellness is very important in our life and then comes the financial attribute all of us of course we are working really hard because we have our dreams we want to go to a dream destination for traveling we want to buy that new car a big house so that comes the financial wellness as i have already mentioned it's very very important for all of us to have a healthy bank balance but you know in uh, pursuit of making the healthy bank balance we should not be running after uh, only earning money and compromising on our basic ethics attributes and home values so financial wellness is important we must make sure that we have a decent bank balance so that it, in the time of need we are not dependent on anybody else and uh, that plays a major major role when it comes to sense of security for a woman as well then comes the intellectual wellness reading books pampering yourself watching a good movie going out with friends and interact nowadays there are many platforms where women come together they have these coffee table meets and uh, why not we consider the even a today session is a intellectual session where i see all these great uh, experts and women of substance sharing their own views but when it comes to intellectual wellness it is also about give and take it is not only about taking and taking and consuming more intellect always gets doubled and nurtured when we share our knowledge and experiences with others i must say i learned a lot uh, when aisha was uh, discussing her story that she's come from a very small town but then having said that um, when it comes to tier 2 and tier 3 states we always judge people on the basis of the place they are coming up or the way they dress up there the most important thing is the intellect of a person it does not matter which state you are coming from even our uh, one of the well known uh, bollywood actress uh, priyanka chopra she is born and brought up in bareilly but see today she is representing india on a global map so having that intellectual uh, intellectual appetite and also working towards on your intellect is very very important so in a women's holistic wellness intellectual wellness plays a very very important role and the last one i really want to uh, pay a special attention to this that even if uh, today we have a good body we are financially strong emotionally strong lot of friends but still there is a hollowness in the heart we still feel empty what is that hollowness is the spiritual wellness connecting to the almighty there is a god and spiritual wellness has nothing to do with a particular religion spiritual wellness means you are connecting yourself to your own self in today's fast changing pace and in today's competitive world what we are trying to do is we want to understand others but in that race we forget that it is no it is not important to know how others are it is very very important to know who you are how you are feeling 
so uh, i must say that uh, women should stop wearing the weight of other people's expectations and judgments because only you know what you are going through uh, only you know your life challenges experiences and difficulties and small little fights for an example for a working woman um when a maid is on leave she doesn't turn up uh, we know that how we have to balance the whole day we know that nowadays um, kids are also not going to the school and they are attending online there are so many tasks which goes for a toss and you have to do a lot of balancing act having said that but do not uh, judge yourself on the basis of other people's expectations and judgment of your body your features your age if you have less um, hair on the or if you have a uh, you don't have uh, the best of the lip shape or best of the body that does not mean you are any less you are beautiful the way you are born because at the end of the day we believe that we are the best creation of god and we must celebrate each and every day and every day is a women's day for all these beautiful women those who are uh, listening to us today and would be listening us later after uh, the recording uh, comes out so these are the eight wellness uh, dimensions what i personally believe that uh, contributes a lot in uh, women's complete overall holistic growth but having said that there are five points where i want to emphasize more that uh, that goes really long way contributing to a women's overall growth prospect the first one is the balance between work and family what happens sometimes nowadays we are so obsessed with the career ambition i'm saying i'm being an ambition women is always good but we must realize that where is the alarm clock going if your body needs your attention you give it a break you can give it a break to your career and pay attention to your body because at the end of the day this is your real estate where you have to spend your whole life so there was a time somebody asked me where do you live i said i live in this body <laughs> and then i realized oh she was asking about my address but yeah this is the permanent address so this is very important that balance work has to be done for all the lovely beautiful women out there those who are working all the homemakers sometimes we feel so obsessed and we feel guilty of not being able to give that particular time to our kids to our husband or uh, in laws or the other social responsibility what we have in today's time but creating a balance is all about first giving attention to your own self and uh, second most important attribute what i really request everybody to uh, focus on is overcoming your own fears based on the social norms be proud of your decisions as i have already mentioned that nobody is aware of your story nobody knows that how long you have come up in your own uh, career in your own uh, fears your own uh, anxiety or physical issues so it is very important to overcome your fears and break the bias and come up and do not get worried of others judgment because what you know about yourself is more important rather than focusing on what other things of you that's the most important part and then take out time for yourself time for yourself you can go to a spa you know when you love yourself then only you'll be able to love others also so that's very very important to love yourself first put yourself first and learn from your life lessons there are no failures like as again i have heard other my fellow speakers so i must say that all of them had their own failures in their life but they learned from their life lessons and then when you convert your failures into your life lessons of course it plays a big big role in your overall holistic growth and there are certain books which i really want to suggest to everybody you must watch a movie called mary com it actually talks about not only a character of a women but mary com's book and movie also talks about the integrity and the attitude we carry in long term there was a time in mary com's life when uh, it was said that being in a sport that to boxing it requires a lot of stamina but she has gone through a c section where 
year she was expected never to come back to the boxing again but she comes back again wins an olympic for india again wins a lot of international gold medals so it's never about the body it's never ever about the shape uh, you have it's never about the color but it's always about the attitude and the strength you have here so stay blessed stay sattva this is all from my side thank you so much i hope i was short and crisp but if i have been given uh, more time i would like to ask for the questions from the audience members uh, ma'am you can take some questions yeah if anyone has any question they can put it on the chat box i would be really happy to take the questions yeah you can check the chat box if you are getting any question students you can put your questions in the chat box you can also follow us on instagram and uh, you can email me on your queries related to occupational financial spiritual physical mental emotional wellness yeah i think so ma'am you've made yourself so clear the students do not have any questions for you thank you so much thank you so much ma'am thank you ma'am for your stimulating session thank, thank you for such a knowledgeable session ma'am now i welcome dr anubhuti patnagar dr anubhuti patnagar a phd in sociology writer life coach and a social sector leader a member of rotary international is the managing director of neo fusion group she is the founder of neo fusion creative foundation an ngo working towards the empowerment and education of adolescents after several several years of work around with youth literacy in 2013 she founded neo fusion with the vision of transforming the lesser privileged youth of india to break the poverty cycle fondly known as ma she is the force behind the foundation's work and growth her organization has impacted 9000 plus young lives in the past 8 years and has received recognition for its continuous upliftment of underprivileged adolescents as an advocate for gender equality women's empowerment sexuality education she has successfully created a safe space in her ngo and aims to encourage conversation about similarly stigmatized issues in others as well in her persistent efforts towards the development of society she hopes to reach more people through project samvad now i would request ma'am to please share your ideas on this interesting topic with us all thank you so much uh, first of all and a very uh, warm good afternoon to everyone so uh, first uh, first of all i would like to thank to gems and all the team members of this beautiful webinar which is happening right now and the topic what has been given to me is quite uh, like quite apt for me because i have been uh, working uh, on this field since last 9 years now it's going to be 8 plus 9 years uh, so uh, i'll share one ppt about it then we will we can proceed further so, yes so uh, my topic for today is education decreases women's poverty so uh, before we'll talk more about it uh, how the poverty uh, how it decreases the poverty let's figure out some statistics uh, which has been given by the government of india or other organizations so uh, as we know that uh, according to census 2011 uh, we are approximate the women uh, of in india are approximate of 48.5% uh, so it is around 69 crore we are uh, like 69 lakh we are uh, there in india uh, not lakh 100 crores right 69 crores we are there right so uh, so much of population right and apart from this 
you will see the literacy rate is 70%. So that means 30, around 29.7% still they are illiterate. That means that around 22 crore women are still illiterate and which is, which is a big number, right? So why this happened? Why the illiteracy happened uh, among girls, among women? What is, the, uh, what is the issues behind it? So the issues which comes up, like family doesn't want to send them for the education or there are other uh, cultural belief or uh, another religious belief that is, that is happening. Still, it is happening after the uh, like uh, we are going to complete the 75 years of independence and the condition is still not that good. Yeah, we are improving each and every day, but the condition is still not good, right? So yeah, so uh, why they are not able to go to the school? Uh, they have to uh, take care of uh, household, they have to take care of their siblings because in last nine years we have done so many, uh, uh, we have conducted so many surveys in the, on the ground level and we have seen that the girls are not able to go to the schools because they say is that they have to take care of their, their uh, small siblings and everyone. Right. So, uh, and in the villages, they have to take care of the cattle and other so many household chores. Uh, so they are not able to study. They are not able to go to the schools. So, according to uh, UNESCO, uh, uh, which uh, uh, they have published in 2013, if all the girls uh, had a primary education we will be able to lessen the number of 14% of the child marriage. That is a huge, that will be a huge number because what the statistics say is that still around 2.5 crores girls get, uh, mar get married uh, in, a very, uh, in a early age, in an in a age of adolescence, uh, which is a huge number. And we will be able to save the, these 14% girls from getting child, uh, getting married uh, in such a small age. And uh, if they will complete their secondary education, two third of the fewer child marriages will ha happen. That is a huge number. We will be able to impact more if we will send all our girls to the school and the colleges. And it says that if uh, all the girls will get the pri uh, primary education. 10% of the fewer girls will become pregnant. Again, it's an alarming thing. And almost 60% fewer girls would get pregnant under 17. So see how much uh, we will be able to give to the society. Like, because I have seen uh, the small girls in la last nine years when I have worked on the ground level, I have seen uh, small girls getting pregnant and having issues and having health issues, so many other issues while they get married on a very early age. And yes, another very important part, if the mother is educated, then he, uh, then uh, she will be able to take care of their child very uh, smartly. She knows how, what to give and how to give and hum kehte bhi hain is baat ko ki agar hum ek mahila ko padhate hain to pura ghar padhta hai so this is the same thing happen so because she will be aware of hygiene she will be aware of menstruation she will be aware of childbirth so if we will educate a girl if each and every girl is educated we will be able to do so much for the society So education, like empowerment, empowerment comes from the education. And girls' education is the most powerful tool to change their status, not only within the family, but in the society as well. 
So we have seen the statistics that what the statistics saying and I, uh, that it says that if we will work more on the girls' education, that they, it will give them the power, power to change their life, their status in the family, their status in the society, right? So if they are educated, I can see that because uh, since like, uh, as I told you so many times, uh, as I'm working since uh, nine years now, and uh, I'm working with those beneficiaries, uh, like those uh, beneficiaries whose uh, whom mothers are working, right? Because I'm working with the beneficiaries or the, their mothers are domestic helpers, their mothers are cook, their mother are uh, iron person, they are doing these uh, kind of uh, activities. So uh, if they are lit, uh, literate, then they will be able to create more income. Right, because all the women I know, those who are uh, those kids are coming to my uh, NGO. They all are uh, illiterate women, and they are uh, they are earning. They are earning, but are they able to come out from the poverty cycle? No, because they don't have one tool. One tool of what? One tool of education. If that tool will be with them, then for sure they must have done something else and they must have come out from the poverty cycle. So, yes. <clears throat> so rich, this, uh, research says that if a woman is educated, then she will be able to increase around 20% of her earning. That is if she is Earning 10,000, she will be able to earn more. She is earning 20,000. If she is educated, she will be able to earn more. So 25% is a huge amount which will be able to impact her and where she will be able to decrease her poverty. So there is a, a small story which I want to show up to you. Is it audible for you all? Yes, it's audible. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Is it audible? Yes, yes, ma'am. It's audible. now the priyanka in 2022 और एनजीओ में कथक सीखती भी है और सिखाती भी है और साथ ही अपने घर पे बच्चों को ट्यूशन भी पढ़ाती है और जल्द ही ताइक्वांडो में ब्लैक बेल्ट भी हो जाएगी मेरे घर में हम तीन बहनें हैं मेरी बड़ी दो दीदीयां जो कि बिल्कुल नहीं पढ़ी हुई हैं और उनकी कम उम्र में शादी करा दी थी और आज वो डोमेस्टिक हेल्पर का काम करती हैं मेरी छोटी दीदी उनका बेबी नहीं है क्योंकि उनको हेल्थ इश्यूज हैं मुझे ये समझ आया कि अपनी जिंदगी में पढ़ाई का कितना बड़ा रोल है और मुझे उम्मीद है कि एजुकेशन के माध्यम से मेरी आने वाली जिंदगी बहुत अच्छी होगी और मेरे परिवार की जिंदगी भी बदल देगी या 
So this was all from my side that uh, you have seen the two videos of Priyanka. In one video, she is uh, sitting with her ma mother and uh, where she was talking about that she, uh, she was in 10th at that time and she was getting married and she was being forced by her uh, parents, by her, uh, by her uh, siblings, by her uh, society nearby people that she should get married. But she convinced, she tried to convince her parents and she convinced her parents and now she is doing BA and she is uh, teaching in our NGO. She is pursuing her BA in Kathak and she is taking tuition at home. So there uh, you can see the changes that the, how the education has brought her there from here. And now when, while she will complete her education from where she is right now, where she will be able to change her life more. So this is the thing that, yes, my topic says that, yes, education decreases the poverty, women's poverty. And this is the right thing that, yes, uh, education decrease, uh, decreases women's poverty. And please, I just want to say to all of you, there are, uh, we are, I, I think we are uh, more than 250 people right now sitting here. And I just want to say to everyone that if you know any women nearby you, if you know any girl nearby you, motivate her to study. Please bring her into the uh, uh, education. I know one of the girl, uh, she, uh, she is married and uh, she is 30 plus and she was uneducated. She completed her 10th uh, through Neofusion. Uh, then she completed her 12th from Neofusion. And now she is pursuing her BA. And with that, she is able to uh, educate uh, uh, other uh, society people. She is working in another NGO and where she is taking so many classes and she is pursuing her dreams and she is uh, taking care of others' dreams also. So uh, that's all from my side. And I would like you all to take up an oath today that if you see any women or any girl, please motivate her to go for the education because every year uh, on Women's Day, our Mother's Day, we celebrate Chinatiyon Se Sahas Tak. That is a program we, uh, we have started for the women empowerment. And uh, when I talk to my uh, beneficiaries, uh, my children's uh, mothers in that, she, they were saying that we had to study, but we had to send our brothers to study, we had to get married quickly, my dream was gone, my dream was gone. So probably, हम अब किसी के सपने को पूरा कर पाएं और प्लीज आप लोग को अगर कोई भी महिला कोई भी बच्ची ऐसी मिलती है जो कि पढ़ना चाहती है या उसका अभी नहीं पढ़ना भी नहीं चाहती यदि उसका कोई सपना रहा था कि उसे पढ़ना था तो उसे मोटिवेट कीजिए कि वो अभी भी पढ़ सकती है और अगर हम 269 पीपल दोज हु आर सिटिंग हेयर अगर हम एक एक बच्ची को भी पढ़ाते हैं अगर हम तो हम दो 269 लोगों की जिंदगियों को बदल पाएंगे और फिर उनसे बोलिए जब वो 270 लोग या 269 जो भी नंबर है अगर वो आप एक एक को बढ़ाते हैं और वो कुछ बढ़कर आगे बढ़ जाती हैं तो आप उनको बोलिएगा कि वो 250 अगली गर्ल्स को पढ़ाएं तो ये चेन रिएक्शन जो चलेगी ना तो फॉर श्योर हमारा जो 30% जो हम अभी पीछे चल रहे हैं लिटरेसी में विमेन की फॉर श्योर वी विल बी एबल टू इंक्रीज इट एंड फॉर श्योर व्हेन वी विल गेट अ चांस टू स्पीक अगेन ऑन द सेम टॉपिक आफ्टर 10 इयर्स द स्टैटिस्टिक्स विल बी मच बेटर देन व्हाट टुडे दीस स्टैटिस्टिक्स आर uh, that's all from my side. I would love to take the questions. If you have any question, please, uh, you can uh, ask from me. Thank you so much, Dr. Narula, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for your inspiring presentation, your years of research, your in-depth knowledge on the subject, and your ability to present the subject in such an interesting and intriguing way has inspired many of us to further explore this domain. Let's now pr proceed for the question answer session. If anybody has any questions, they can put it in the chat box.
and we we have been fortunate to work with gyms students they have joined us as interns in last 3 4 years so and i really uh, i'm impressed with the work the way they work with us i still remember a student of vjmc muskan and she was from jaipur at that time we were having an institute in jaipur and she worked there for two months and the way she has worked there that was commendable so uh, we really looking forward for the young blood those who are uh, those who really want to work uh, for the society and if they want to work uh, for the education or performing in visual art or any such, such kind of topics they are most welcome to come to our ngo and you can uh visit our ngo anytime you can have a class there you can take the class whatever you want to take uh, whatever way you want to contribute you are most welcome to be there okay any questions anyone for dr anubhuti Um, I think so. We do not have any questions from our side. Uh, Ma'am, I would like to ask you one thing. That suppose the students get motivated. Yeah. So there is an announcement. Uh, the attendance minute. link will be shared in a short while in the chat box. Yeah, Ma'am is asking something. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah, ma'am. I just want to know that the students who get motivated, uh, seeing the good work happening around them, and the change they, that is bringing. So, how they can connect? The very first thing what they can do, they should uh, directly try to connect with some NGO. That is the first step they should do, or they should start on their own. That uh, they have seen one or two kids, and they start teaching on their own. what so, should be the structured uh, way i feel uh, right so if go, uh, abruptly going to the kid and asking the kid to study that is little difficult hmm. and uh, what i have seen in last uh, so many years that uh, for uh, the module what we have we are we have been following uh, and we have never been uh, gone to any kid to study hmm Uh, when i started uh, my foundation at that time i started teaching them painting i i started talking to them i started uh, motivating them through the stories so uh, when i came to Gur gurgaon in 2014 uh, i started going to a park where the uh, kids used to sit there i start sharing my thoughts with them i became a friend to them hmm. because if we'll go straight for the education they will not uh, they most the percentage is around 5 to 10% they come back and they ask for the education like hame padhna hai but mm -hmm. more of the kids doesn't want to study so uh, how to bring them with them uh, them to the study is the main thing so uh, it will be good if you can go to the any organization if it is nearby or if you can go to some uh, school where these kind of kids are studying so because the school dropout rate is also very high in india yeah so there we can say and apart from that yes uh, if you see some kids nearby and they, they are not studying just go to them ask them what they want in their life uh, share some stories uh, share some other thoughts so then gradually they become your friends and you become their friends and they they start uh, connecting with you then they start sharing with you then for sure you can bring out the pen and pencil for them and you can distribute them. and you can start with that yeah. so this is how we have done and we have seen the changes in last uh, so many years that yes that way they have been able to change themselves otherwise agar hum khali padhne ke liye bolte hain wo log nahi aana chahte yes It, i i think that is why the government is also running mid day meal uh, kind of this right. uh, scheme so that the for the meals the students should come to the schools and then they should study yeah yeah earlier hota tha ki because they don't have lunch at home yeah. and they are hungry so they doesn't want to come to the they don't want to come to the school and they feel that ha uh, hum to bhooke hain hame kyu padhna hai so that is the one thing they started then some of the government have started the happy hours uh, uh in they have incorporated happy hours scheme into the schools so they get a chance to do, explore more because uh, 
प्रॉब्लम कहाँ आती है क्योंकि हर बच्चे के आंख में आ, मन में एक सपना है कि उन्हें कुछ करना है लेकिन जब वो सपने उनके पूरे नहीं होते बिकॉज दे डोंट नो कि हमें उन सपनों तक पहुंचे कैसे जितने स्टूडेंट्स यहाँ पर बैठे हैं उनको पता है कि उनको किस तरह से आगे जाना है बट दो कमिंग फ्रॉम द अंडर प्रिवलेज बैकग्राउंड उनको पता ही नहीं होता कि हमें आगे कैसे जाना है क्योंकि उनको काउंसिल करने वाला कोई नहीं है अगर उनको काउंसिल करने वाला धीरे धीरे कोई मिल जाता है तो फॉर श्योर वो आगे जाएंगे आगे बढ़ेंगे Let's do, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for such motivating and inspiring words. Um, now we have a small announcement for the students that the link for the attendance will be shared in your chat box after a while. All right. So let's proceed ahead. Um, we have with us today our head of department, Dr. Minakshi Narula. She is also the currently. Uh, she is also currently the presiding officer of the internal committee for Jim's Vasantpunj. I welcome you, ma'am. Kindly propose the vote of thanks for all the guests who were there, who motivated us in all the ways possible. Over to you, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think you all had a very wonderful session. So, on behalf of the management, faculties, staff, and organizing committee of this webinar, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to all our distinguished guests. for taking out time from their busy schedule and discussing the important issues with our students i am very thankful to ms yogita bayana for addressing our students even though she was traveling ma'am it was very very enlightening session and when you were talking about the uh, the curriculum that curriculum itself differentiates between the girls and the boys i could relate uh, with it and i remembered uh, when i was studying in 6th 7th and 8th uh, in our um, uh, school there was a subject which was uh, optional it means uh, for girls it was a different subject and for the boys it was a different subject uh, girls were studying home science subject and the boys were studying craft i remember and in that home science uh, myself being a girl we were Uh, involved in the home science subject and there we were learning stitching cooking all these things were taught to us so yes definitely the curriculum itself was imbibing in us that we should become a good homemaker and we should not think beyond that so that time i was not able to understand why we are studying this subject and boys are studying different subject so now i yes understand that this was the uh, gender biasness in the curriculum itself and uh, uh, ma'am was rightly pointing out all these things in the curriculum and i am also gra grateful to miss aisha for motivating our students and thank you aisha for providing uh, the steps for uh, our students to become a good public speaker and we are really proud of you as our alumni that you are doing wonders in your life and yes you we are all we are very happy to uh, associate with you and we will definitely keep calling you for various sessions thank you aisha and uh, i am very grateful to miss preeti singh for highlighting the attributes for women's holistic wellness and uh, when ma'am was talking about different attributes uh, like she was emphasizing on the uh, importance of physical wellness career wellness financial wellness and then intellectual wellness and spiritual wellness i myself being a working woman i could correlate with the, whatever uh, ma'am was discussing that yes this is requirement of the women when they are working yes this is the requirement of the women when uh, people talk about the career so uh, ma'am your uh, uh, that session was very very enlightening and thank you very much for uh, sharing your thoughts with our students last but not the least thank you dr anubuti and uh, nothing better can be here that instead of only talking talking and motivating people you bring the proof with you and you have shared the story of Sh uh, priyanka and really that is a big uh, motivation for all of us to see ourselves the change education can bring Uh, among the underprivileged women or any women any girl 
and definitely i was very much impressed and i feel we all should as you said rightly that all of us if we take the commitment of taking care of only one girl child which is the underprivileged or not getting the means to get the education if we can educate one girl child obviously that 30% gap and we can uh, uh, bring the power in the women the topic of our session uh, the seminar was women empowerment so definitely education can bring the empowerment uh, in women and we could see priyanka uh, ourselves thank you ma'am and definitely thank you that uh, appreciating our students who are working with you and uh, definitely i will motivate my it student also can you tell us that uh, how can we uh, collaborate some technical th do you have anything technical or we can te uh, we, uh, we can associate to teach computers to uh, sure, we students. have we have laptops at our premises Very nice. and, uh, yeah so, so uh, ma'am what we were doing uh, uh, for few years before this lockdown this corona happened uh we were taking the uh, classes for that uh, slum area students uh, uh, nearby uh, our college we used to call them and we used to teach them some computer course like ms office or how to use internet web technologies so small small things how to use internet and how to use uh, word excel powerpoint and i was amazed to see the small small kids they have fire in them and the zeal they have to learn is really amazing and they used to at the end of the session we used to give them some exercise to prepare a ppt and so wonderful ppts they were able to make so yes if we can help so uh, this way our students who are in bca can help the students learn some computer skills we will be very happy to associate it with you ma'am for sure so, ma'am if you want to take any kind of session uh, physically then for sure i will be there and we can have or we can create a group fine. a group who can really can work with the kids and uh, in fact as uh, it is happening on the right time as the summers are coming yeah. and we will yes. be going for the internships yes yes so okay. for sure we can make a, a great plan out of it because i have seen james is uh, having a road track club also yes so yes. Uh, because i am a rotarian so i i can connect with them also mm -hmm. so we can have a concrete plan that how we can deliver in a much better way so we can give our 100% and that should not end somewhere it should be continuous in coming time yes so, yes definitely sure. yeah thank you ma'am we will connect after the session also some day and uh, through dr jory or directly i will talk to you dr jory i think is interacting with you yeah uh, so thank you ma'am for accepting our request to present your session in, in fact, our uh, dr dhar uh, ravidhar sir yes. uh, he, uh, he is uh, sponsoring two of our girl students yeah yeah sir was telling moment. even yeah. sir only referred your name that you are the right person to call for this kind of webinar because the whatever is our uh, objective of conducting this webinar it uh, really what you are doing that <coughs> we are talking actually so you are practically doing and we are trying to inform our students that these things can bring the change in the women yeah. <coughs> thank you ma'am one to whom uh, he is sponsoring she was working uh, still she is working as a nursery helper part time and uh, she joined us when she was in ninth and she never been to school and but the gist was there that she has to study and she was forced into the marriage and she was married and she has taken the divorce now because she was not uh, this, uh, she doesn't want to go to the uh, house that person's house and now uh, she is doing her 12th and with that 12th she is um, preparing for clap that's very so, nice Very so nice. that way we are able to empower girls and i have seen the changes in them because convincing parent is quite a difficult work if you empower a women that is the most uh, beautiful thing then they can convince their parent by their own correct correct so amazing work ma'am amazing work you're doing thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you ma'am for gracing the session thank you very thank much thank you thank you so much thank you over to you kezia
Thank you everyone for making this session a great event. We have shared the attendance form in the chat box. Kindly mark your attendance and the form will be closed within five minutes. Thank you Thank everyone. You. Thank you everyone.